All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out a Gecko Moria list that I came up with that is geared more towards uh, budget players, players who are building on a budget. Now, understand that this deck is currently, the, the actual, not the deck you're looking at here, the, the Gecko Moria primary list that people are using in the top tournaments to win tournaments. It is the most expensive deck, I think, that we've seen so far in One Piece. Because now that it's doing well, people are starting to jack up the prices, gouge prices and stuff like that, scout people. And um, I think to run a top tier Gecko Moria list right now, I think it's something like almost $500 if you buy every card individually. However, the deck you're looking at here on the screen is a pretty solid deck. We're going to watch um, about five games on the sim of it, and we're going to look at the prices of it. This, this deck here is about $135 to $145. Uh, and let me go ahead and show you that right now. Um, actually, actually, let me let me run through the list first. Excuse me, I almost messed something up there. Let me put my glasses on. We'll, we'll run through the list. We'll talk about the prices, and then we'll watch some games on the sim. So, again, this today's video. So th there you go. You know what you're getting into. Today's video is geared more towards players who are trying to build on a budget, and potentially players who want to get a good idea of how these how these cards function in Gecko Moria if you haven't seen them function yet. Because Anupe and Terraralin and the uh, Thriller Bark Stage are are not really they're not typically in the main deck like the main uh the, the decks that are winning right now but they're pretty solid cards and I, I think you'll you'll get an idea of that in the in the video okay so let's go ahead and check out the prices first then we'll go into these games okay so first up like i said what you see here this is the entire list i just did an optimized shopping card of every single one of these uh cards that is needed in the, in the deck list and i'm and it's 100 it came out to 136 dollars 45 cents that's before tax so it'll probably run about 150 or so after tax and everything right and again this is for basically the most expensive deck in the entire format so you see the rob luchis those are about 275 the gecko morias are going to run you hot those are what that's the most expensive card in the deck is gecko moria at 1650 but you're gonna need that card guys i don't know how else to say that if you plan on running any black decks in the future <laughs> unless gecko moria gets banned it's, it, that's that's a card you need uh, 250 for Hell Mepos. That's a little expensive because it's from ST06. Suru is 250, but that card's going to go on just about every single black deck as well. And then about 20 bucks for the Peronas altogether for all four of them. Okay, so that's that's the list. That's you know that's what the cost of it, and, and this is the deck here. So let's go ahead and hop into some games. You guys can get an idea of how this deck plays out. And and it it was running pretty well for me, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like it was. Um, oops, let me adjust my my camera real quick. Okay. Uh, full screen and let me make sure we got the sound off and 2x speed okay the deck was running very well for me like I wasn't struggling very much on the sim uh, there were maybe a few games where let me drop this down perfect there we go there were probably a few games where I wish I had Borsalino um, because that's the card that's running super expensive right now for those who don't know so the list you just saw of mine is almost the entire Gecko Moria list you know give or take a few cards but if you add four Borsalinos, you have to increase the price of the of the of the deck by three by two hundred dollars right away because they're about fifty dollars a card right now. And like I said, or I think I said earlier in the video, I am going to uh, be doing a price uh, a market watch or price watch video later this week. That that's not what this video is about. But Borsalino has jumped up in price, guys. Okay, sorry, we missed the first whole part there. We're really just you know it's Gecko versus Gecko. This guy's running the standard list, by the way, and it's just going to be a, right now. We're just setting up the board. We're just setting up the board to see, you know, to try and establish value here and there. So he, he had his brand new out early. I'm not running brand new in my list, right? Because I, I don't think I am. I, yeah, I don't think I'm running brand new in this list. I'm running the uh, Inupes in his place because I'm not running enough uh, Navy cars to search for because we're trying to make it so budget. Uh, I, I don't think I was running brand new. So I'm, I'm like starting to second guess myself. I don't think I am. Um, so swing five in, into the brand new play out. The, the, Brook has been nice, but I think in my list... I'll probably talk about it more at the end of the video. I think I would drop down to two Brooks and go up to four Luchis. That's like one immediate change I'd make. So I'm not running any Sabos. That card as well is like 15 bucks. Right? I think it's like 13 or 14 bucks currently. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. But but Borsalina that you see in his trash there and Sabo, those cards, if you increase your deck, if you put four of those in your deck of each, your, your, your deck's going up like $250. So we'll just try to use, we'll just use Cerberus, right? That, that's the four man's, <laughs> four man's blocker there. Which is nice with the stage. Um, I might talk about that a little bit more later. Anyway, back to the game. So right now I'm trying to figure out what I need to do here to win this game. 
Um, I have a hand advantage right now, but he has a one card life advantage, and 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 he had he had a one character advantage on the board. So I play out Hogback to keep my advantage up. I I narrow down the life totals. Now we both have an equal board, equal life, but I have a better hand. So I'm going to swing nine into his life, play out the blocker, and pass the turn. I I don't. How do I say this? I don't want to um, extend too much. But at the same time, you do need to, like, cause here's what I'm trying to say. He could drop a Lucha right now and probably pop my hog back and my uh, Cerberus. Instead, he goes six at my Brook and KOs my, um, my uh, what's his name, the Cerberus with the Absalom. Okay, so swings eight at life. I do have to take that. Now I'm looking for targets, what I can grab back with Gecko Moria, because this is a clear Gecko Moria turn here. I'm, I'm, I'm up against the ropes here. I'm in trouble. So I swing five into pro, and I'm trying to fish cards out of his hand. Okay, I did get a card out of hand, so now I'm going to get Gamoria. I did minus five to Sabo first. We'll do minus uh, three over to Absalom, and I'm going to pop both of these guys with a Rob Lucci. And that's what I've seen. I think having four Rob Lucci is really, really important. Now, after doing the play testing that you're seeing that, that I did today, ha having the Rob Lucci is absolutely critical for what you're trying to do to control the board. And because I'm running so many cards like Sindri that mills my top five cards, uh, Terrarlin that mills my top three, Inupe that does a two-card cycle, that's what's allowing me to kind of stay in the game, uh, you know, or keep, keep these cards in my trash. Because remember, I, I so basically, you know, if you think about it like logically, I'm removing my brand news for Terrarlin, which is a two-card two mill top three. And I'm removing my Sabos for Anupe, which is draw two, trash two. And yes, they're not as they're not as good. If you have any of the cards, I'm saying you should add them to the deck. You, you know what I mean? If you have the cards. Uh, but but for the newer players who just want to play Gecko Mori and have a list that can at least compete, it, it won't be top tier. Of course, this is budget. Whenever you're dealing with a budget list, you have to understand that it is not going to be S tier. You know what I mean? It, it will not be top tier. Is it? Let me make sure this is on two X speed. I'm sorry, guys. It seems like it's going slow. Okay. So I was able to get the board back again here with a, with another Gecko Moria, and it's all about going Hell Meppo, Rob Lucci, and just you know with, with your Gecko's effect to just pop their board. And now look at my board versus his, and he just gives up here. And again, the the, the player I don't I don't know how good the player is that I just played. This is just a random player on the sim. But think about it. I was able to go toe to toe with a other Gecko Moria list that is running all of the you know the five hundred dollar list and, and all that good stuff. Okay, so let's go on to the next game. All right, sorry guys, let me find the app. Uh, where is it? There we go. Okay, this next one is versus Uda. This is a green Uda deck. Let me make sure we're at 2x speed. Okay, we're good. All right, the volume is off. Yes, the volume's off. So green Uda. Um, actually, let me let me say this. I really like going first with Gecko Moria. That, that's obvious. Every Gecko Moria player wants to go first. And notice here, I went Sindri out turn one to fill up my trash. I play out Perona to make my opponent trash a card. I've got my 5k body now. Now, Gecko, or excuse me, Uda can draw some cards now. So it that Perona is actually better than you might think. Because, look, they just trashed the backlight. So now they can't KO one of my characters for free, you know, for paying two whenever I tap my Perona next turn. Um, so, so being able to... Being able to get some value from Perona in this matchup is, is actually very important. And I have another one in hand here. So I'll swing six. I need to still battle for the board because I didn't get any cost reducers. Very, very unlucky. I didn't get any cost reducers. So I swing seven. I, I go ahead and trash out a Perona to play a Perona so they have to trash a card from hand. And then I'm going to swing uh, seven into their uh, guy, their, um, their Zoro. He gives me another 2k counter. So he's given me two 2k counters already and one's on the board. That's a good sign because this this deck, the, the green Uda deck, I think it only runs like 8 to 10 2k counters, and I already see three of them, right? So he can only have seven more in his deck maximum if he's running the full, because sometimes they run Ezos as well. So he might have up to 12, it's hard to say. Okay, so he swings five at life. Um, I have a lot, another nice thing about Inupe and Tar Tararlin and the Cerberus is they're they're pretty um, easy to throw away as 1k counters. Like, I really don't feel bad throwing those away as 1k counters. Um... And honestly, in this deck, it really doesn't feel bad to throw away Absalom or Hogback because you, you can just get them back. You know what I mean? That, that was one thing that was nice when playing. Okay, so I give minus two to the Nami here. That Nami has to go. I can't let him generate too much value with his Namis and his leader effect and all this while I still have to fight for the board control. Swing six into the four Mihawk there. 
and then I'm going to go 8 into the Zoro. And in my mind, I'm thinking, surely he won't counter out of this. He gives me an Ezo 2K and a 1K in the in the 3 blocker, uh, the 3 cost blocker, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the 3 cost blocker Uda. I, I was kind of in a state of disbelief when he did that, to be honest with you. I could not believe he did that, but... It made sense. So I chose not to protect the Perona there. I easily could have with a 2k counter for one card, but I want him to start attacking into my life a little bit. But at the same time, I expected him to attack for more than that, so I had to block out. Okay, so I have Rob Luch in hand, but I'm struggling here to get into the trash. I wish more than anything that I had not trashed my Anupe. I wish I had trashed my Cerberus instead, like when I when I uh, countered out. Oops, sorry guys, let me make sure I got this on. Okay. But yeah, that, that felt that felt a little bit like a play mistake because a new pay will help you draw. It's a draw two trash two filter, so it would have helped me, you know, get cards. Okay, so I swing six into his um, Zoro and he lets it go. So he didn't even block out with his with his Luffy. So and he, then he didn't block out my leader. So it's like okay, well in that case I'm just gonna try and you know fill up the board some more. I play I'll get a Moria Hell Meppo to minus three to the to the he the 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 uh, not the Hina excuse me the Nami and then KO with Absalom. That's the beautiful. That is the most beautiful combo, guys, and that's why I run the four Helm Epos. You can do it with Suru for a minus two, but having that extra three range is really nice. Okay, so they swing into my Absalom. I block the first time. I make him swing in with his with his um, with his Luffy. He plays out Eustace Kid here, and then uh, plays out the Uda. And this does not look good for me. Like this is not a great situation. But notice they did not trash a card from hand. An event. It has to be an, an event card. Uh, to stand up one of their characters and, and I guess it makes sense they only have four cards in hand they're starting to feel like they're you know they're starting to feel a little bit suffocated a little bit strangled so that does make sense all right so right here uh, I'm just looking through my trash to see what I can get back to, to try to battle this board because I need to get that Hina excuse me that Uda off the board I don't know why I keep saying Hina today I, like I don't I don't even run Hina right now I'm sorry guys uh, but but yeah, the Hell Mepo and the Subaru are great cost reducers, and I can always get them back with my um, with my Gecko Moria. And it's very easy for me to get either of them in the trash because they're one K and two K counters. The the Subaru's a two K, and the you know the Hell Mepo's a one K. So smash into his uh, kid, use his kid for eleven. Smash five to face, no trigger. Smash five to face. They don't run a ton of triggers in uh, the Uda deck. And his turn. So I've kept his hand pretty small, which is nice, and I have a full control of the board right now. I have full control of the board. He's going to swing seven into my guy there. I'm going to let that go. I can't defend it anyway. Um, and, and plus, I do want him to start attacking my life a little bit. Now, you have to be careful against Uda. Green Uda can turn on the gas real fast and just start going like, you know, with, with a, I'm Invincible, one of their, their events. They can go like swing seven, swing seven, swing seven if they need to. Okay, so what is this? He's swinging an 11 into my Gecko. I pause for a minute to make him think I might have a 2K, 1K, or a 2K, 2K in hand. I don't. It's just a bluff at this point. And at this point in the game, I'm actually in quite a bit of trouble here. I need to start putting on the pressure. Because like I said, if, if they have I'm Invincible or two I'm Invincibles in hand, I'm basically dead, right? There, there's no way to get out of it. That's just how this matchup goes. That's how this... Um, you know how Uda is. <laughs> Uda, can, like I said, she can, now I do see one. Uh, I'm invisible in the trash right now, so that's good. So I know, like, okay, they have a, they have less potential to have that. But let's see what they do. So I, I end up. I did a hog back there and swung for I think it was seven at life. Now I'm going nine at life and then nine more at life. And he took the first one. Let's see if he takes this nine k. Yeah, with Hogback, I got back a Gecko Moria, so I'm threatening next turn to have another strong play against him. Then I go nine more at life here. He has to give me a blocker. He ends up giving me a blocker and going 2K, uh, or what was that, three 1Ks to get out of that. And I play Cerberus. And I say, okay, you know, I realize, like, how badly I'm in jeopardy right now. I have no counter in hand, like zero counter in hand. So I have this blocker. He swings five into my Absalom. I'm already starting to feel more, more relieved about that. He whiffs his, his search with his leader, gets Ezo on the top, and I get a 2k from life. So I'm start, now all of a sudden I'm starting to feel better. Then I think he has a play mistake here we're going to talk about in a second. He swings 11 into my Gecko Moria when I have my, my, my Cerberus blocker. Now watch this. It shows his hand at the end of the game. Sometimes it does that, by the way. If you move your hand around, like adjust your hand, it will show their hand if they leave instead of conceding. Because when someone concedes, it, it reveals all the game state. But... Notice what they had in their hand. They had a backlight in their hand. 
All they had to do was pay two to tap down my blocker. That's all they had to do. And then they could have done what they did. Now, I'm not saying they would have won the game because they still needed one card to stand up at the end of that turn so they would have had to trash the uh, the other backlight from hand. But it would have definitely helped them out big time. Okay, so that, that was the game versus Uda. <clears throat> Next up, we have a game versus Red Purple Law. Make sure this is on 2x speed. Okay, so Red Purple Law is... Uh, Gecko Moria is highly favored into Red Purple Law. And even in this version, it is like even in the version I'm running that's budget. This was I finally got a got the stage right. I'm only running two of the stages. The stage is really nice when you have all these targets with the new pay with Cerberus and with uh, Sindri and with uh, Terraralin. Okay, so swing six at life. I'm gonna hit him with a gecko. Uh, excuse me. I'm gonna hit him with a prone here to make them trash a card. And I still have one Dawn left to use my stage. So I'm gonna be able to bust out another card. Okay, let's see what I get. He, he trashes that and then gives me a two K counter. I play out a Sindri to just keep filling up my trash because what I need, I need uh, Absalom. I don't have an Absalom in my hand and I need that. So that that was, again, that was really nice having that stage there to help me uh, fuel my trash. Still don't have Absalom though. I got to start going for it. Plays out an Ayn or Ain, however you say that. Plays out an Otama, minus two to my Perona. He's going to he's gonna get rid of that. So minus, minus three Dawn, gets off the board, plays Beppa to go up, go up a Dawn. I've got Hog back here. And again, I need some type of removal. Like I, I desperately need some form of removal here. So I'm ready to take the chance here. Um, okay, so I just trash a card and, and I did not get a, I did not get a, uh, what's his name? Gosh, I'm sorry guys, uh, Absalom. But I play out Hog back, he's a body at least, and I can I can get my Gekka Moria turn set up. And then I play out the uh, Terraralin card to trash my top three cards and play out a Cerberus. My board's completely full. I'm feeling pretty good now. Finally got an Absalom in my trash. Now next turn, I'm going to be able to play out Gecko Moria and, you know, start getting some, some major advantages there. Okay, he plays out Eustace Kid. Great card in Red Purple Law. Okay, so swing five. I know he has three more swings here, so I, I just go ahead and give him the blocker since, you know, that way he doesn't remove it with his leader's effect. Got my value there. He's going to swing six. I'm going to give him a 2k counter. I want to stay pretty high life uh, against um, uh, um, against uh, Red Purple Law. Okay, so I got another Gecko off the top. So it's like, okay, let's play out Luchi. Let's play out Helmeppo. This is the star of the show. Like I said, every time this, this combo feels good. Like, without fail, it feels good. Get rid of the Otama. Get rid of the five cost blocker. Swing five into his Beppo. Let's see if he has any cards in hand he can defend with. Doesn't defend with whatever it is. We swing five at life. And now he, he's taken one. And we have full board control. Our opponent only has three cards in hand. Now he does have quite a bit of Dawn. Red Purple Law usually is struggling with Dawn when, it, when it's uh, battling for board control. But this guy has plenty of Dawn right now. Okay. Ain swinging into Hogback. I'm going to let that go. I'm okay with giving up most of my cards on the board. Like, I don't want to give up my Geckos. And I don't want to give up... Um, well, that's really it. Like, out of, out of all the cards I have, I don't want to give up Gecko. Because the rest I can just fish back from my trash with my leader's effect. Um, Brook would be one that I don't necessarily want to give up. <clears throat> okay, so he swings five to Helmetpo. You can have it. Don't want it. Um, then he swings nine to leader. I'm going to take it. And I draw another Gecko Moria. Now now it's starting to feel pretty rough. Where it's like, okay, I want him to KO my um, my stuff. Uh, you know, my... my um... Oh, and I get it. So I did a... Thriller Bark Search with my stage, or not search, but I did a Thriller Bark, I activated my stage, sorry guys, I'm, I'm struggling here, and put a Sindri in play, it got me a Rob Lucci from, from the top of my deck into the trash, so I could do the combo all over again, because remember last turn he bottom decked my Rob Lucci with a, with a Gordon or uh, Ray's Max, whatever his name is, and it's pretty much over now, there's nothing he can do, right, he's down to, what is that, 7 Dawn I believe, yeah, 7 Dawn, he's got to return one there, and, and I'm just, I'm sitting pretty. I've got two 9Ks on the board, a 6K, and then two 3Ks that I can easily pump up to five with just a two Dawn investment. Okay, let's see what he does. There's not much he can do, in all fairness. Like, that that's kind of the state, the, the this that's that's where we're at in this game. Okay, so he minus three to my, to to, uh, to Lucci. I don't know what he was doing there. I think maybe he meant to minus three to my Helm, my, uh, not my Helm, but my, um, my Gecko Morian. But, but I'm, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm very con confused and very perplexed by that play. But at the end of the day, I don't think it matters much because I'm going to go nine to life. He only has one card in hand. He does have a blocker. 
but I'm, I'm just going to beat in for nine and nine here. He, he gives me that one and then just load everything up. I, I could have swung like, uh, what, uh, something like a bunch. Okay, he's done. Okay, good game. That is a very favorable matchup for us, I will say. Okay, I've got one more for Red Purple Law, and then I've got one from Yamato. All right, so let's go ahead and watch this one real quick. All right, and the beginning of the game is for, when you're playing Gekko Moria, if you're a newer player, uh, especially newer to Gekko Moria, the beginning of the game, like turn one and two, you want to play Sindri's or Brand News if you have, if you if you actually do have Brand News in your deck. Sindri's, Brand News, Inupes, Terrarlin, any cards that will fill up your trash. You want to fill your trash up early, so that way it's smooth sailing for the rest of the game. Okay, this Red Purple Log gets off to a much better start than the guy I just played against, it feels like. Um, but now, I think he, what did he bottom deck? I think it was a Perona. I missed it. Uh, sorry guys, I did miss that. So I play out Absalom. I'm gonna I'm gonna KO one of his four cost five Ks. It doesn't matter which one. They don't have on they don't they both have on play effects. So it doesn't matter which one gets KO'd. Um, play out the Absalom here. Swing six at life, like I said, with with that effect. Now he's going to hit me with a fire fist here to minus four thousand to my Absalom while KOing my Suru. And we know he's going to bottom deck my my Absalom now. That is a great target for them to bottom deck because then I can't get it back. Right? That's not good. Now, I did top deck another Absalom. That, that is always nice. Let's see what he does. So, I mess up here. Big play mistake. Big play mistake. I should have minus four to the Shariah. I don't know what I was thinking. Because now I swing nine into his guy and I can't even get it. I mean, I'll tell you what I was thinking. What, what I was thinking was I needed to get his, his Dawn um, producers off the board. Like his cards that help him ramp back up his Dawn. But Shariah, I think, was still the, the better target technically. He's going to minus three again with, with a uh, with a Gordon to get rid of another Absalom. But I've drawn another Absalom from life. And now I am up against the ropes. Do, you, you know, notice notice the position I'm in here. I do take a little bit of time on this turn. I'm at one life. I can't KO my, I can't just like all in and try to KO the, the, uh, the law. He has three bodies on the board. So I need to have a very high value turn here. So I go ahead and trash that guy with, uh, with Brooke, which was nice. And then I go um, eight into his um, into his law to ensure that it gets KO'd, because he'd had to jump. He'd had to have two two Ks in hand at the time. Swings five at life. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm obviously counting out of that because of how low my life is. Okay, I just trashed an Absalom. He knows I have that coming next turn, but I don't have a Luchi in my trash. I don't believe I do. Let me see. Yeah, I'm looking right there for one. I don't have Luchi in trash. That's not great. That is that is definitely not ideal, right? But, but it happens. It is what it is. Um, so I, I need that Ain to go away. Like, I have to at least remove, like, two characters off the board this turn. Swing seven into Ain. Okay, I'm feeling better now. I'm going to swing... What is this? It looks like... It looks like I'm trying to swing at life here. But I think playing out the... Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think I need to play out the Gecko Moria here. So I'm going to swing six at life to try and get him to use a counter from hand or to, to waste a character. Hell Meppo with Absalom takes out a five cost. No problem. That is, that's just, like I said, that, that is the star of the show right there. That's what you're always going for. If you can combo with a Luchi, even better. Um, so he goes 7k at face here. I see he has four Dawn left. I have to, okay, I got to pause this. I know I haven't, I've been pretty good about not pausing today. I have to take this hit. I have to chance it because if he has a rusher in his hand, which I don't know what he has in hand, he hasn't revealed any cards through a search or anything. I have to take this in chance getting a card that is, you know, a 1k or a 2k from my life. Now, I have a lot of targets in the deck that I could hit. It was a high probability of hitting one. But if I had gotten an Ice Age or if I had gotten a Gekko Moria, then it would have been a bad play for sure. But see what happens here. Because because realize what I'm saying. If I don't, if I counter out of this and dump my hand, then he could have potentially gone 7 with lead and then played out of Zoro and gone 7 again to lead. But again, I don't know what's in his hand. Okay. So he swings seven. I take it. Very risky play here to take this. And I get a 2K. All I needed was a 1K and I could have gotten out of this attack right here. That, that was the whole point of that. Then he concedes. And again, if... Whoops. Let me... Uh, oh, man. I wanted to... Hang on. Let me uh, pause it right here. Ah, I'm messing everything up, guys. Okay. So you see what was happening there. I needed a 1K or a 2K just to make sure I got out of this 9K attack. But then if he... if Basically, if he had a, a rusher of any kind, I'm just dead there that he could play out from his uh, leader's effect. Okay, that was a chance, but it was one I kind of felt like I had to take. I don't know, maybe not. It all depends. Uh, and y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Maybe that was a little too risky. 
Um, but do know, I did do the math. I do have to stress that. I did do the math on the situation. It's just I was trying to risk it in case he had the rusher in hand. But if he had the rusher, I think I still lose if he goes nine like that. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. <laughs> it may, maybe it was a crazy play. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. All right, so next, last game here, I'm going against Yamato. Let me make sure I'm on 2x speed here. Okay, Yamato, another really good deck in the format. I didn't go against any Sakazukis, but but I think if you go first against Sakazuki, you do pretty well. You'll, you'll end up doing pretty well. Going second, I, I, I will say this. Going second's not that bad either because going like, you know, a four, six, eight curve with like, you know, four, four costs, well, quote unquote four costs, you just play out Absalom, you know what I mean? And then six cost Brook into eight cost Gecko Moria, that does have a lot of tempo to it. And it's hard to remove a six cost than an eight cost. And, you know, while they're having to deal with your little stuff as well, you know, Sakazuki can do it. If any deck can do it, it is Sakazuki. But I think you guys know what I'm saying. Let me, sorry guys, I got to move this uh, real quick, make sure everything's good. Okay, we're still good. All right, so I'm swinging six in the leader here. I'm just trying to fill the board. You notice I played out a new phase. I've played out my Sendries. It's all the early game for Gecko Mori is all about doing your your due diligence to fill up your trash. And against Yamato, in this, I noticed he's playing a very defensive Yamato list, like probably a fortress version of Yamato. The, the killers are a dead giveaway. So I am aggressively counter out, countering out of things that are going at my life. I don't want to lose any life because as soon as he gets me down to three life, which is just one attack from his leader, right? As soon as he gets me down to three life, all of a sudden, his um, his leader's activate main is turned on, and so are any kind of triggers he might be running if he's running any kind of Kikinojos or Neka Mamushis or things like that. So I don't want to give him any life if I can help it. Okay, so I swing five at life here. I need him to use that, um, that Monet blocker here that I have on the screen. I don't care about the killers because he has no Dawn attached to them. I don't know why he didn't attach one Dawn to them this turn. It doesn't make sense. M might have been a play mistake. Um... But I'm like he could be sitting on on a, on a, on a uh, L Thor or some type of uh, event counter, but you know I'm just trying. I, I just wanted to get rid of that Monet, and I was able to because he blocked with it early by tapping down my Nupe, and then I'm going to use my Absalom here to KO another one, and now I'm going to swing in six with Sentry, and and I'm I'm very very aggressive this game. I think this guy's playing a little too defensively. I'm no expert on Fortress Yamato, but you kind of want to play pretty aggressively at first just so you can turn on your leader's effect. Because look at this, guys. He can't use his leader's effect to attach to Dawn to his um to his uh, useless kid. And when I see that, I'm like, okay, I probably should have saved that guy and just gone for game this turn because I don't have to attack his useless kid this turn. It's because, because he, he, remember, for those who don't know, you have to have a Dawn attached to useless kid in order to have, in, in, in order to be like forced into swinging into him. Okay, so right here, I'm like, uh, okay. So I play out Rob Lucci. Um, unfortunately, I, I messed up the clicking there. I, I should have, <laughs> I should have, instead of clicking a new pay, I probably should have gone with Helmepo because now I can only KO one target. I definitely messed that up. That was, that was a mistake there, but you guys know what to do now going forward. <laughs> if you didn't already know that, that was, that was just a straight up misplay there. It, I think it might've been a misclick is what it was when I was playing where it's like, oh crap, because the way they're stacked when you, when you do the search, it's very hard to, you know, I don't know. No excuses. It was a misplay for sure. Because um, getting the Helmepo there would have let me take out both blockers, get another card out of hand. And now here we are again. Notice this, guys. He plays out Doflamingo. Okay, do y'all see the problem with this? Um, everybody, pause. And do you see the problem with, with this game right now? Like how, how bad a shape this Yamato's in right now? I have five life. So even if I take the one hit from his, um, his Eustace Kid, I'll be at four life. So he still can't activate his leader's effect to attach a Dawn to his Eustace Kid to force me to attack into him. So, again, you have to be a little more aggressive up front with, with um, Yamato, and sometimes that means going down to, like, zero life, you know, going down to, like, no life cards left. But you have to do that, or else your leader is basically a vanilla leader. You know what I mean? So, and, and that's going to be the end of this game, as you can see here, because, again, he locked down three of my guys, but I don't have to attack into his Eustace Kid because I'm going to counter out of his 5,000 power attack from his leader. So now he can play out... A blocker, yeah, he's gonna play something out with Eustace Kid effect. Let's see what he plays out. Because you can activate main, uh, rest this this character to play out a three cost or less. So I adjust my cards to see what's in his hand. He had an Ezo he could have played, but that doesn't matter. It's, none of these cards matter, right? None of these cards matter for keeping him, keeping him like surviving in this game because there's no blocker. Um, so again, you have to be a little more aggressive.
So anyway, back to what we were saying with, with the deck, guys. I think this deck has been pretty decent, for all things considered. Being like a $135 deck, this is a pretty budget deck list. And remember, the only cards you, you'll absolutely have to pay for are like Peronas, Gecko Morias, uh, Rob Lucci, and uh, probably the Helmepos. The rest of these cards, people might just give you. Actually, Suru as well. Suru, um, what's his name here? Uh, Rob Lucci, Perona, these Helmepos because they're because they are from the starter deck, um, and then the Gecko Morias. Those are going to run you. You know, that's like the main bulk of the price of this deck. Like probably ninety percent of the price of this deck. If you ask around, you might be able to bump some Absalom, some Anupes, some Terrarlins. If someone's just find someone who has these, right? Terrarlins, Cerberus, um, Inupe. Sindri is an uncommon. That might be hard to get. And it's it's not nice to ask for the, for the rares. I feel like asking for commons, though, your friends should be able to hook you up with these. And, and probably, is this a common as well? Yeah, yeah. Thriller Bark is a common as well at the stage. Right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to ask down in the comment section below. Um, as far as, like, revisions to this deck, as you get cards, like, say say you really enjoy this deck and you're trying to build up from the point that I, you know, the point that we that we left at here at like you know right around 135 bucks for for this uh, for this deck, you know, say you start getting more and more of the cards like you start affording your Borsalinos and, and you know getting what you need. Well, it's a pretty it's a pretty easy translation over. Like I said, Terrarlin is is a this becomes your brand new. Like as you as you get brand new, just throw that into this slot. For Anupe, this becomes Sabo. Uh, Brook is just a tech card that I like to use. Some some decks are running that, but ultimately, when you want to add your Borsley nodes, you could drop down a Brook and drop down two um, Thriller Barks, things like that. You see what I'm saying? Like it's it's really easy to transition into. And if you can get greater eruptions, that you'll probably have to make some some bigger adjustments for. Like I said, maybe drop the. Um, again, that that will be bigger adjustments. You, you, at that point, you could just copy a list that's winning, right? Once you have all the cards you need. But this, hopefully this at least helps out some newer players get into uh, this really fun deck. Gecko Moria is a really cool leader, guys. It's a really fun deck to play. And even without the top tier, S tier deck list, it performs very well, guys. So I, um, please don't forget to like, subscribe. And that's it for me, guys. Until next time, peace.